Carboniferous period. The climate of that time on most of the Earth's land surface was almost tropical. During the Carboniferous period, the oxygen content in the Earth's atmosphere more than doubled, reaching 35. In the Devonian period, the oxygen content was 15%. Today, the amount of oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere reaches 21. The marine fauna of the Carboniferous was characterized by a variety of species. The foraminifera that lived in that period were not animals, plants or fungi. The remains of these creatures even today form huge Cretaceous deposits. From these deposits chalk is taken which is used in all educational institutions around the world. Schwagerins appear in the middle Carboniferous. The globular shell of the creatures was the size of a small pea. From the shells of foraminifers of the late Carboniferous limestone deposits were formed in some places. Well-known corals began to form huge reefs during the Carboniferous. At this time, echinoderms developed intensively. In particular sea lilies and sea urchins which occupied four of all genera of the Carboniferous. Brachiopod mollusks had developed very much. Productus enriched the phenia. Cephalopods such as nautiloids or thosaurus, cerchosaurus, belemnites, ammonites flourished in the Carboniferous. The first terrestrial gastropods appear, animals that breathe with lungs. But there was a problem with trilobeds. In the Carboniferous period only a few genera and species of these first animals survived. By the end of the Carboniferous period, trilobeds had almost completely died out. This was facilitated by the fact that cephalopods and fish fed on trilobeds and consumed the same food as trilobeds. The body structure of trilobeds was imperfect. The shell did not protect the belly. The limbs were small and weak. Trilobeds did not have attack organs. For some time they could protect themselves from predators by curling up like modern hedgehogs. But at the end of the Carboniferous fish appeared with powerful jaws that gnawed at their shell. Therefore, from the numerous type of trilobeds, only one genus has been preserved. In the seas and rivers of the Carboniferous lobe fin fishes were strongly pressed by cartilaginous fishes. The group of ancient sharks also belonged to the lobe fin fish. Ancient sharks were not much like modern sharks. Eugeniodons were the most numerous order of ancient sharks. The most interesting feature of this detachment is the dental spiral. It was a long soft outgrowth on the lower jaw, studded with teeth and usually coiled. Eugeniodons were large fish from 1 to 13 meters. And the Campidus shark even broke the Dunclistus record in size. Adestus also known as the scissor toothed shark and coal shark. The remains of Edestus were found in carbon deposits of coal. It's another one of the prehistoric sharks that has given paleontologists a hard time trying to understand their fossils. The 6-meter Edestus belongs to the same ancient family as the Bizarre Helicobrin and also shares its unique tooth shape. A relative of Edestus is the well-known Helicobrican. The body structure of this ancient shark remains unknown. Helicoprians could eat fish. The second large detachment of Carboniferous sharks is the Simorids. The third and last worthy of mention detachment of Carboniferous sharks is the Xenocindida. They were moderately large predators from 1 to 3 meters. Sharks bred intensively. This eventually led to the overpopulation of the sea by these animals. Many forms of ammonites were exterminated. Solitary corals which provided sharks with easily accessible nutritious food have disappeared. The number of trilobites has significantly decreased. All mollusks that had a thin shell died. Only the thick shells of spirifers did not succumb to predators. The products have also been preserved. Animals defended themselves from predators with long spikes. 
the Vakinichi animals began to be occupied by small fish, similar to modern chimeras but more diverse. In addition to these main classes of fish, smaller fish existed in the Carboniferous class of ray fin fish and acanthid. In the lakes of the Carboniferous period, arthropods appear, including 17% of all genera of the Carboniferous. These are crustaceans, scorpions, and insects. Insects that appeared in the Carboniferous occupied 6% of all animal genera. A wide variety of fish lived in the freshwater basins of the Carboniferous. Some of the fish jumped along the muddy shore, like modern jumping fish. Fleeing from enemies, insects left the aquatic environment and settled on land first near swamps and lakes and then mountains, valleys and deserts of the Carboniferous continents. Carboniferous insects were the first creatures to take to the air. Insects did this 150 million years before birds. Dragon fleas were the pioneers, Samuitsi. Soon the dragonflies became the kings of the air of the coal marshes. Butterflies, moths, beetles and grasshoppers followed suit. The abundance of oxygen in the air allowed these creatures not to form a normal respiratory system. Insects continue to use poor trachea and feel no worse than other terrestrial arthropods. Dragonflies were the only extensive detachment of Carboniferous insects. Representatives of the smallest known species of insects were 3 centimeters in length. The wingspan of the largest insects, for example, Stenodictia, reached 70 centimeters. The ancient dragonfly Meganevra had a span of up to 1 meter, and its body weight roughly corresponded to that of a modern crow. Meganevra's body had 21 segments. Six segments made up the head, three segments chest with four wings, eleven segments abdomen. The terminal segment resembled the styloid extension of the trilobite tail shield. Numerous pairs of limbs were dismembered. With their help the animal both walked and swam. Young meganeurs lived in the water turning into adult insects as a result of malting. Meganeura had strong jaws and compound eyes. The six-winged Palaeodictyoptero and the flightless Blattopera. Similar to modern cockroaches, also lived in the Carboniferous. The second large class of arthropods of the Carboniferous were arachnids. This class includes three different orders of normal spiders and one order of scorpions. Arachnids of carbon reached very large size. The record one including the tail belongs to the scorpion Pulmonoscorpius. Another species of arthropods that became very numerous during the Carboniferous is the Snokas. Dyspnoi and Upnoi. These creatures were quite advanced at a time when spitters and scorpions were still at a fairly early stage of evolution. Horseshoe crabs, starting from the Ordovician, dragged it out a miserable existence in the shadow of trilobites, and the Carboniferous multiplied strongly and captured about half of the ecological niche of trilobites. Eurypteridus began to give up their positions, but very slowly and gradually. Some of these creatures reached a length of up to 2 meters. Centipedes also gradually lost ground. Although the huge Arthropura reached a size of up to 2 meters. In the Upper Carboniferous period ancient insects died out. That descendants were more adapted to the new living conditions. Orthoptera in the course of evolution gave termites and dragonflies, Eurypterus ants. Most of the ancient forms of insects switched to a terrestrial way of life only in adulthood. These creatures bred exclusively in water. Thus, the change from a humid climate to a drier one was a disaster for many ancient insects. Among the insects of the Carboniferous period, there are no bees and butterflies. This is understandable since at that time there were no flowering plants whose pollen and nectar these insects feed on. For the first time, animals breathing with lungs appear on the continents of the Carboniferous period. The life of amphibians is closely connected with water since they breed only in water. 
The warm, humid climate of the Carboniferous was extremely conducive to the flourishing of amphibians. These skeletons were not yet fully ossified. The jaws had delicate teeth. The skin was covered in scales. Scientists named these ancient amphibians Stegosophiles. Stegosophalians inhabited shallow lakes and swampy places near the coast. Some of the amphibians may have stalked prey half submerged in water. In the manner of today's crocodiles. Perhaps such animals were like young salamanders. These creatures were formidable predators with hard and sharp teeth which grabbed their prey. Most animals had four legs with short toes. Some creatures had claws that allowed them to climb trees. Legless forms also appear. Depending on the way of life, amphibians acquired triton-like, serpentine, salamander-like forms. Perhaps many of them spent their entire lives buried in the mud. Microsaurs were more like small lizards with short teeth which were used to split the shells of insects. Towards the end of the Carboniferous period a new group of four-legged animals appeared in the ancient vast forest. They were mostly small in shape and in many ways resembled modern lizards. These were the first reptiles on Earth, or rather reptilomorphs. All reptilomorphs can be divided into four groups. The first group included all synapsids. The group consisted only of pelicosaurs which later split into several new groups. It were very advanced animals. The creatures already had normal nostrils and ears. The most characteristic representative of the first reptiles belonging to the synapsid group was the Edaphosaurus. This animal resembled a huge lizard. On the back of Edaphosaurus there was a high crest of long bone spikes connected by a leathery membrane. Edaphosaurus was a herbivore and lived near coal marshes. Some of them reached 3.5 meters in length, and the mass reached 300 kilograms. Another group of synapsids were the spinacodons. These were predators, the first among tetrapids to grow powerful fangs at the corners of their jaws. In the Carboniferous, only Macromerian was known from this family. Spinacodons are our distant ancestors. All mammals are descended from them. The size of the animals range from 60 centimeters to 3 meters. Other smaller representatives of synapsids were varanopids. And the most numerous of the synapsids was the Aphiacodon. The size of the animal could reach up to one and a half meters. Anthracosaurs, the most primitive reptilomorphs, possibly the ancestors of all other groups. These animals did not yet have eardrums in their ears. Some anthracosaurs had a weakly defined tail fin. Anthracosaurs ranged in size from 60 centimeters to 4.5 meters. Eugerinus was the largest anthracosaurus. The third large group of reptilomorphs, sauropsids. They were real little lizards. Helonomus was the distant ancestor of all turtles. And Petrolocosaurus is a distant ancestor of all other modern reptiles, as well as dinosaurs and birds. A separate representative of the reptilomorphs was the Soldonosaurus, which reached 60 centimeters in length. You will see about other interesting times of the Mesozoic era in the next issue. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Don't forget to click on the bell to see new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.